Hello, I'm Rebecca Barnes, and welcome to the Science Eater Vodcast. In this episode, our journey through the wonders of modern astronomy brings us closer to home as we begin to explore the solar system. We'll discover the scale and structure of the solar system, find out why we explore it, and introduce the European missions launched on a quest to further investigate our local celestial neighbourhood. Ancient astronomers observed points of light in the night sky that appeared to wander across the fixed background of stars. These five wandering stars, or planets as they came to be called, along with the Moon and Sun, are Earth's closest cosmic neighbours. Until about 400 or so years ago, a limited view and understanding of our solar system led astronomers to believe that our world was at the centre of the universe and that the sun, stars and planets orbited the Earth. At that time, astronomers only knew about the five planets closest to us, those that are visible from Earth to the unaided eye. Over time, our view of our local cosmic neighbourhood has changed and evolved as technology and scientific thinking has progressed. Nicholas Copernicus was the first to realise that the Sun was at the centre of the solar system. Johannes Kepler discovered that the planets moved in ellipse-shaped orbits, and Galileo Galilei was the first to use a telescope to observe four tiny moons orbiting the giant planet Jupiter, showing that more than one centre of motion existed in the solar system. The invention of the astronomical telescope provided the ultimate tool for astronomers to observe the solar system in more detail. In addition to facilitating the discovery of two more giant planets, telescopes also allowed scientists to see the surface of the planets for the first time. Continued study of the heavens over the past few hundred years has completely changed our perspective of our place in the universe. The solar system, a tiny region of our galaxy, is dynamic and is in constant motion and evolving. Although small in size compared to the Milky Way, the solar system is actually very large. Our solar system formed from a large cloud or nebula of gas and dust about 4.6 billion years ago. This cloud mostly consisted of hydrogen and helium that formed in previous generations of stars. This pre-solar nebula was a rotating sphere of dust and gas. Slowly, the dust settled around the central plane to form a disk. At the center of the nebula, a protostar formed. Further contraction in the heart of the protostar caused the temperature and pressure to increase until they were high enough for nuclear fusion to ignite. In the disk of debris surrounding the very young Sun, heavier elements remained closer to the central star, whilst lighter elements were pushed by the solar wind to the outer regions. The dust and gas, while settling into a disk, started to accrete. Some material was broken down into smaller pieces, and others began to cluster together and stick. As these clusters grew larger and larger, they attracted even more material and eventually formed the planets observed today. The Sun is the central engine of the solar system. It is by far the largest body providing light and energy to all other objects that lie within the system and that are held in orbit by its strong gravitational influence. Closest to the Sun is a group of our terrestrial planets with solid rocky surfaces Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars. Beyond the orbit of Mars lies the main asteroid belt, containing thousands of chunks of rock that vary in size and tend to be irregular in shape. Traveling even farther from the Sun, we reach a group of four giant planets which have no solid surface. These are the gas giants Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. Past Neptune, hugging the plane of the solar system, is the Kuiper Belt. The thousands of objects here, so far away from the Sun, contain much colder material 
and are predominantly made of ices and rock. These are comets. The Kuiper Belt is also home to three dwarf planets, Pluto, Eris, and Makemake. Even further away from the Sun, the Oort cloud forms a halo surrounding the entire solar system. The Oort cloud is home to millions of comets. The outer boundary of the solar system is known as the heliopause. This is where the solar wind, energetic charged particles emitted by the Sun in all directions, collides with incoming particles from interstellar space. Many of the planets have moons orbiting them, and the entire solar system is filled with microscopic particles of dust. And why do astronomers and scientists want to explore the solar system? It's human nature to seek knowledge of the world around us. The solar system could be considered as a laboratory that allows scientists to explore physical processes seen elsewhere in the universe. For example, the Sun is the only star that can be studied close up. If as much as possible is learnt about the siblings of the Earth, such as Mercury, Venus, Mars and the Moon, then scientists can build up a deeper comprehension of the history of our own planet and what might be in store for its future. For example, on Earth, processes such as water flow, plate tectonics and the growth of vegetation have constantly changed the landscape and hidden a lot of its geological past. Whereas these processes are not active on Mercury, Mars or the Moon, so they preserve a record of the solar system's history. Ultimately, scientists want to explore in depth and compare the properties of all solar system bodies, including the Sun, in order to reveal and understand their composition and the processes of play, together with how the system formed and evolved into its present day state and how it will continue to evolve in the future. At the dawn of the space age, very little was known about what the planets were like as individual worlds. Venus was believed to be concealing lush rainforests under its thick clouds. Images taken by the first mission to fly close to Mars were expected to provide us with more clues about the big question, did life ever exist on Mars? Major developments in the technologies used in ground-based telescopes have made a significant contribution to knowledge of the solar system. However, over the last half a century, launching spacecraft above Earth's obscuring and turbulent atmosphere has allowed for huge progress to be made in solar and planetary science. Perhaps one of the most important advantages of launching into space to study the solar system is evading Earth's protective atmosphere, which blocks a large portion of the electromagnetic spectrum. The Sun emits radiation across the entire electromagnetic spectrum. Therefore, missions designed to study the Sun and most interplanetary spacecraft carry a suite of different instruments that study a wide range of wavelengths to gather as much information as possible. For example, ultraviolet wavelengths can probe atmospheres and magnetospheres. Near-infrared and X-rays can be used to study the mineralogical properties of chemical composition of solid surfaces and radio wavelengths can be used to map large-scale features and surface properties. A spacecraft that makes the journey across the solar system to another planet can take close-up images of the surface as well as directly monitor its atmosphere and interaction with the particles emitted by the Sun. A spacecraft in orbit around another world can provide constant monitoring over a long period of time and view regions that cannot be seen from the Earth. A spacecraft that can land on the surface of a solar system body provides an even closer view and can study detail that is so small it cannot be viewed by an orbiter, let alone from Earth. These robotic explorers can contain a suite of experiments in which samples of rock or gases can be collected and tested directly. The ultimate next step is to bring these samples back to Earth 
where they can be studied in laboratories using a multitude of techniques and in much finer detail. Exploring the solar system in this way has completely changed our view and has transformed our understanding of our nearby celestial neighborhood. Ulysses was the first mission to fly over the sun's poles, making it possible to map the solar wind in 3D for the first time. The Solar and Heliospheric Observatory, or SOHO, pioneered techniques for looking at the solar surface and has revealed the true nature of the sun's violent atmosphere and as a byproduct discovered over 1,000 comets. The cluster mission watches as the solar wind impacts and interacts with the Earth's magnetosphere, the region in which charged particles are influenced by the Earth's magnetic field. Cluster has made accurate measurements of the motion of plasma in the Earth's magnetosphere, as well as determining the shape of boundaries between the Sun and the Earth's magnetic fields. Continuing the early studies by the Soviet Venera lander series in the 1970s, Venus Express is orbiting this inhospitable planet peering through the thick atmosphere. This mission has studied the structure and dynamics of the Venusian atmosphere and has confirmed the presence of lightning. In addition, the data that is being gathered about this harsh planet indicates that it may, to a certain extent, have been more Earth-like at some point in the past. The planet Mars has been visited by a number of spacecraft since the 1960s. Mars Express is continuing to map the surface and monitor the climate of the red planet. This orbiter, by making color, stereo and multi-wavelength observations, has discovered new geology, climatology, a water ice reservoir, and detected traces of methane in the Martian atmosphere. After a journey of nearly seven years, the Cassini-Huygens spacecraft, made up of NASA's Cassini orbiter and ESA's Huygens probe, became the first to enter orbit around Saturn. In early 2005, the Huygens probe successfully traveled through the atmosphere of Saturn's largest moon, Titan, and touched down on the surface. This is the only landing to have taken place in the outer solar system and the furthest from Earth. JATO was ESA's first deep space mission and part of an international fleet that flew very close to a comet. This mission encountered the famous Halley's Comet, showing for the first time the actual shape of a comet's surface, known as the nucleus as well as revealing the interaction of cometary material with the solar wind. Rosetta, ESA's next comet chaser, is on a 10-year journey through the solar system to encounter comet 67P churyumov gerasimenko in 2014. This spacecraft will go into orbit around the comet and deploy a small lander onto the icy nucleus. All these European missions have made and are continuing to make important contributions to our understanding of the solar system as a whole. In a very short period of time, our understanding of the structure, composition and evolution of the solar system has increased dramatically. However, this increased depth of knowledge has generated even more questions and further exploration is required to answer these new questions and fill in the gaps in our knowledge. For example, exactly what triggered the initial collapse of the nebula from which the Sun formed? Was it the shockwave from a nearby supernova? Did the Sun exist as a fully-fledged star before the planets formed? Or did the Sun and the planets all form at the same time? All the planets in the solar system developed from the same material. But why do their atmospheres and surfaces vary so much? Comets and asteroids are material left over from the formation of the solar system. What are they made from? And could they hide clues about the origin of the solar system? Energetic particles emitted by the sun as the solar wind 
spread throughout the solar system. How do planetary atmospheres and magnetospheres respond to interaction with these particles? No evidence for life, either past or present, has yet been discovered elsewhere in the solar system. So what are the conditions for the origins of life? And why did it evolve on Earth? The European missions now exploring the alien worlds of our solar system are contributing to the gathering of information scientists need to keep on piecing together the story of the solar system's past, present and future. Over a short period of time, Europe has played an important role in our quest to understand the solar system and our place within it. I'm Rebecca Barnes. Thank you for watching the Science at Easter vodcast.